There we go then, in this video I'm going to take a look at how this crease decoration in the back of this gauntlet. Now there's many ways to skin a cat. Uh, there's specialist tools you can make, there's a few I've made for myself like this which I'll cover. I'll also show how you can do it off the back of an anvil. just takes a bit of more time, um, but any old straight edge on a bit of metal will do. Uh, you just have to be aware of what's going on. So I'm going to show uh, a couple of techniques, like I say, of this going into this one here, which I'm just about to start. At the first point, um, I tend to, <coughs> excuse me, I tend to start with my knuckles here like this, and uh, then work back. Or sometimes if there's a bigger plate in the middle here, I'll start with that and then work out. But this is where we started this time, at the top here. And what I'll do is get myself a centre point. I've not attached these to this yet, because I just find it easier not to. Until all the fluting's in, to be honest. All the creases are done. Um, but what I'll do is take a look, and there's my middle point there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've made a blue mark on that one there, as you can see. And then just checking that it's all lined up. It's so got this red line you can see there. It's always vaguely where I want my knuckles to go. Maybe back a little bit on that side. It's close enough for government work at the minute. And I make a little mark there. Show you that one. And then we've got that dip there. And then knuckle there. And then as long as that's there, I tend to find it works. It's a bit high on this side, still a little bit of work to be done. But we'll mark it up all the same. There. So we can tidy them up together when they are together. And a bit of a curve there, so make sure you account for that. And drop that drop off there. So there we go. There's my top marks made. I'm going to find the vanishing point, which I think is on this one. And then we draw our lines across the surface. Nice and straightforward. So here we go, we've marked our lines. Now remember some of these are going down, some are coming up. I tend to start on the risen sections first, the ones that are up, because it creates a valley that you can work into later and it's a bit easier. At least that's the way I do it. I think some people work these and do it entirely from the surface. Other people use chisels, um, some people use hammers and just, just push it down carefully. I tend to do a mixture of um, most, apart from generally the chisel. Um, I, I just never got into the chisels when I started and um, haven't as a result. So the first thing to do is take your first plate off. Now you've got it all marked up. And those of you that are really looking at these videos, firstly I apologise that you've ended up watching my videos and not somebody who knows what they're doing. But you know, so I've gone down to this vanishing point. I haven't done much other uh, lines there apart from um, putting that one out there just so I know where the middle is. This is because this point for me anyway, and the way I work, it tends to move around and they'll often end up down in this one. And in fact, that's precisely what I wanted from this one, just to have the middle one there. Oh, don't want to do that. So what I've done is marked it up here and it will generally drift down to there. And then I can take that out from there. And I'll let future Graham worry about where these lines are coming out from. So you mark them up and something goes wrong and you end up here rather than just there and all that marking has been pointless. So we've got our first of the plates. Now a quick word on these, to be able to get it to bend forward like that does, so it can go down. Now I, haven't, I haven't done these the slides yet on this and sorted out the articulation so it's a bit stiff but you get the idea. That forward bend there that you've got on this piece comes in part because that is shaped like that. It's not flat across the surface, it's very gently bent. I tend to overcook it a bit when I'm cook, um, making them uh, because I know that this process I'm about to do will flatten them a little bit. Um, so I tend to overcook it so it looks a bit sort of Michelin-y and then it flattens out a touch. So remember that when you're making these you can't really make them with a flat plate there, it's got to have a bit of curvature to it. So, let's take a look at how we get these in. A couple of techniques uh, that you can use. So I think I've mentioned in the past, you know, there comes a point in your armouring uh, career, armouring hobby, whatever it is, that you decide whether you're going to buy some specialist tools or some bits and pieces. So, this is an old road drill bit. Now, let's see if I can move the camera up and down it. There's special effects for it. So there we go. Excuse my wife working away in the corner. Some sort of flower. There we go. 
And you can check her out on Greenleaf Artworks. There you go, if you want to ace it and buy your wife a metal flower, she makes truckloads of those. So anyway, enough advertising for me. So this is, uh, I didn't buy this specialist tool, it's one that I've made. It's an old road drill bit, so it's got a good stout piece of metal in there. It can take a bit of hitting once off occasion it's got this face and that curve is deliberate it's not just for this but it means that if i'm doing something flat i can move it like that if i'm doing something curved i can hold it to the face remove it a little bit and it will adopt some of this curve so remember this one in the middle here there you go that one in the middle is going down so we need to start on these outer ones and to sometimes help not getting lost which is what i've done a lot in the past of uh, do the outside ones first because you know they're going up because those are on your knuckles so what i do offer it up the hammer i've got there so look let's check it on the camera there we go nice small hammer nice rounded edges if you've got a hammer with square corners there you will knock those into this material so like this it comes in handy later you'll see but at the moment we keep it easy you can these hammers like this, I find they make a bit more of a flute than a crease. So to start off, remember, you're not looking to strike that edge. Okay, you don't want to drive this in like a chisel on the other side, you're looking to tease this down. It's nice if you can get a strong light coming from this direction, so you can check out the work as you go. common mistake that's made with these and I used to do it all the time is these really are just light catchers you go check out some pictures of originals they're not great scallops like this or very rarely are they great upturned scallops they tend to just be little catches for the light now they're a lot daintier than we imagine I'll just work the other side now this is since I've got a hammer right there and I'm working down quite a bit of this material because this one is going to go down into there so There we go, a little bit of sharpening on there. Just come over a little bit. So there we go. Kind of um, bruises up the front of the surface, you can see it there in the light. But you can see already look, how that catches the light. That's without tidying it up. So it's nice and straightforward. So I'll roll across all of these ones here and then we'll get a looking on this sort of stake setup how I do the creases that are going down. So here we go then, we've um, quickly knocked those in. You can see they're already starting to catch the light and do what they're intended to do. But we don't have these recesses in yet. What we've got is a series of lines, here we go from the back, that are done. Now you can do those in with a chisel. In fact, I probably will on one of them, one of the lanes here, just to show that it's possible. Um, it's not a technique I particularly enjoy, so I'll save it for the, one of the smaller ones. So to get these in here, in the back, what I tend to do, I'll come around the camera so I don't lose, where I am. What I tend to do is make a mark there. There's, there's different ways you can do this. I tend to work to marks quite a lot, um, whereas other people just trust their eye or whatever. And make a mark there. There you go. So you can see what I've done is I've just put that on the edge, taken it around. <laughs> this is easier said than done with the camera in my face, but there we go. 
There we go. So I've got a line-ish, one of those, I'll follow one of them, and I'll repeat the process on the other two, and then we'll pick up there. So there we go, got our marks in, and now <clears throat> what I've done is I've got a, another road drill bit, you can see it there, you pick these up off in second hand, car boot sales, that sort of thing, and I've cut this crescent in it, I've got a sharper edge there and a shallower edge there, um, I think that was probably by accident to be fair, um, but it's worked really well for me over the years, and this goes into the anvil. So with that curve, what this lets me do, a couple of hammers here. What this lets me do is I can off that up there, I can see my line runs along that ledge there, and I can just push it in that way, and that will start to give me my crease on this side. Now you can uh, get hammers like I showed you earlier, like this one, that works fine. What I find though is these little corners tend to push into the work and mark it a bit more than it needs work marking. So I found this old one in a car boot, I think it was, and what I've done is I've rounded that end. So you can see its profile, very similar to that one, but these rounded edges mean it doesn't make the marks. But it's a bit heavier, and it doesn't have the long neck reach, so you have to kind of fudge your way around it a bit. But we'll give it a try and we'll see where we end up. So making a line along there. What's important here, if I come around this side, is as I'm doing this, my hand position is like that, so that thumb doesn't move. What that means is, is if I'm like this, it can wave across the face, but by putting that finger there, sorry, that thumb, that finger there, you can see how, and as I move it like that, that finger stays in position and it's not rocking and moving off everywhere. So I'll give it a try this way around. My light's not quite right for me, but we should be okay. Remember, you're not creasing this, you're not smashing that in like a chisel. You're teasing the metalwork around it. So go easy. And then same on the other side. And just keep going. The way I'm making sure I don't get lost here and start striking everywhere is I'm looking for the bruises that the hammer leaves behind in the metalwork and that will help me see whereabouts I am. Now remember, you're not trying to drive that into here. You don't want dirty great lines down this. You'll get some, but hopefully not too many. And the last one. Remember that finger hasn't moved, look. Keep it nice and steady and against it, and it offers you that registration. Try it without, and it bounces everywhere. This piece of metal, by the way, will twist and move around, but it doesn't matter because we've got the ones over there which we can register them back to. So we'll have this, fetch this anvil out, get this stake out, and we'll pop this one back in. Thank you. 
So, we've got the um, valleys, if you want to call them that, in there. They're a bit misshapen at the moment, but that's fine. Now this hammer I mentioned earlier has got this square edge, which works really nicely, gently laid inside there. So the top edge is running along our original crease there, and the bottom of the hammer is race, resting really gently inside that valley. And what we're looking to do is where this has got a bit of a raise like that now as it goes in, comes out, because of the stakes, we're looking to flatten that down, ease it all out. So you're just gently laying the hammer in there like that. You can go this way and do that, it just takes a bit longer. Remember as well, you're trying to preserve that curve that goes that way. If you've gone a bit off here, you can see where the creasing is on there, look, with the previous stake, just draw it back now, rub it out with the face of the hand. Again, on the back of the stake here, again, rather than being like that as I was earlier, I'm, thinking, I'm just resting that on there. It gives you that registration, it stops you getting lost. And there we go, just kind of check the light. You can see how it's relatively straightforward to drop those creases in there. They're a bit exaggerated at the moment, you look at the back, because up and down a lot, I don't want that, but we can fetch those out later. Like I say, let future Graham worry about that. Easy. So we'll go back to the bench and see if this by some miracle just happens to fit. <laughs> 